And joining us from New York is Belarusian social activist Masha Zabara. Masha, thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, another shocking incident Hi. involving uh, an opposition figure. What do you make of all of this? Well, first of all, Stepan Lutipo is not just an opposition figure. He's a bright, cheerful man, the kind of a person that gives flowers to women at a peaceful protest. Mm. And to drive that kind of a person, who I don't know personally, but I've seen so many videos of him and all of the things that he's done, to drive that kind of a person to a point of driving a pen through his own neck, you know that the methods that the Belarusian dictatorship is using are savage. These are the kinds of things where you know that the torture that they were using is scarier than death, especially when it involved threatening his relatives and his loved ones. Yeah, so I, I guess this just goes to show uh, the desperation there of the opposition in Belarus, right? I'm not in Belarus, but I talked to my friends and family and all of them mm. either know already or are starting to understand that the dictatorship will stop at absolutely nothing to hold on to power because it knows that at the end of this is either the Hague or a good old trial by combat, Lukashenko versus the people. Yeah. And uh, Joe Biden, he's promising to press Putin on uh, human rights issues during their meeting in Geneva in two weeks. Uh, can we really expect anything to come out of this? Has anything come out of sort of uh, th this sort of a meeting before? I, I, I'm not going to hold my breath for it. Biden has certainly been doing some good things, um, but that's not what I'm going to hope for. Mm. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, and uh, Alexander Lukashenko, he met Putin in Sochi in a cosy sort of affair there. Does he feel indestructible in some way? If he does, he's delusional. Um, every dictatorship has fallen. Um, but there's this weird incestuous relationship between the two dictators because Russia supports Belarus, as we all know. Um, and Russia cannot allow Lukashenko to fall because if it does, then that's going to show the Russian opposition or the majority of Russian people, that's going to show them that it's possible to get rid of an authoritarian ruler. And he cannot let that happen. Yeah. All right. Uh, Masha Zabara, it's been uh, wonderful having you on. Thank you so very much. And joining us now is Belarus social activist Masha Zabara and the co-founder of Thrift to Fight. So what is Lukashenko saying now in response to all of this international outrage? Hi. Well, Lukashenko pretends like he's in denial. He has been creating an alternative reality for the entire nation of Belarusians for about 26 years now. And he is using a very common strategy that's been used by uh, countless authoritarian dictators and propaganda, which is the bigger the lie, the best people are going to believe in it. But even that is not working for him anymore because his lies just don't check out on such a basic level. It's really easy to understand that everything he's saying is completely untrue. He's been saying that a bomb threat came from Switzerland, but it also came from Hamas, and it came somehow later than Belarusian authorities have uh, asked the plane to land. So it's a, a complete lie, and everybody knows about it. And um, he's just trying to continue this one single thread, this one line of rhetoric that's not serving him well at all. Right. So what you're referring to was a uh, supposed bomb threat that made Belarusian authorities convince this Ryanair flight to divert its path to Lithuania and then land in Minsk. Okay, so how has the right. Belarusian public responded to the arrest of Roman Protasevich? How do the majority feel about this? You know, I called a couple of my friends and relatives, and there's this initial wave of shock and grief that Belarusians are very accustomed to by now. But I would lie if I said that it was a surprise, because at this point, after years and years of just unprecedented acts of internal terrorism, this is not a surprise to people. This is something that's been done for, uh, you know, especially in the last year, especially in the year of 2020, when the uh, elections or the rigged elections have been held. So, yeah, I mean, people people feel terrible about it, but it's definitely uh, very common what's what's mm -hmm. been happening in Belarus. And the only reason why the, the, there's a huge international outrage is because obviously citizens of other countries are involved, people that were on that plane that had to land in Belarus right. illegally. Now, you know, I'd like to talk about sanctions because how have EU sanctions actually impacted Belarus and its leadership? I mean, they were implemented last year in November. We're now seeing them be ramped up. Will any change come from this? 
Sanctions are a very heated topic of discussion at the moment, and um, I'm going to say what I think about it from a perspective of an outsider right now, because I don't live in Belarus at the moment. I live in New York, but I do talk to uh, a lot of my relatives and friends. And the reality is as follows. Belarus gets most of its support from Russia. The only reason Lukashenko is still in power is because Russia is giving it is giving him uh, its financial support. And so the sanctions from the EU are helpful, but they are not harsh enough because nobody wants to piss off Russia. And so um, second of all, sanctions need to be applied not only to a select group of powerful individuals, they also need to be applying to, applied to every single person participating in the machine of Belarusian dictatorship actively. Uh, I mean, the Belarusian special police forces that have been doing crimes against humanity for God knows how long. Uh, they're named Amon. Um, they have to be applied against people on all propaganda channels, on, on the media, and then every business that supports the dictator. And additionally, sanctions obviously affect regular people. Right. They, people that are fighting for, uh, for freedom of Belarus are suffering from sanctions. However, they can work if there's a simultaneous stream of very strong, consistent aid for Belarusian activists, for people that are standing against the dictatorship. All right. Well, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us and giving us your perspective.